lots of people will say that breast is best, but breast is normal. When we look at America, we are bombarded by bottles, formula. What's the best formula? Breast milk has so many more things in it than what's in formula. So being able to normalize breasts feeding, that this is the normal way that babies get their milk, is a huge hurdle that we are working to overcome. Our biggest challenge is supplementing. We are finding that a lot of moms will breastfeed, 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 and then they get tired and want to feed the baby formula. We have to explain to the nurses that we cannot force the mother to breastfeed. If we do have a mom that is breastfeeding exclusively and she does get tired, we want to let our nurses know and instruct our moms to kind of take a step back. Breathe, let mom get up, take a shower if she needs to. Once mom gets back in the bed, relax, put baby skin to skin, and allow for mom and baby to have that moment, then both of their anxiety levels will start to decrease. In order for mom to make an informed decision, she has to understand the benefits of breast milk and the risk of supplementation. We have a formula prep kit. It contains an instructional handout, which shows the mother how to properly store the formula, how to properly prepare the formula for her child, and how to ensure that she's doing this the safest way possible. The nurses are surprised that it takes all of these steps, which encourages them to go ahead and keep encouraging her to breastfeed. In order for mom to gain access to formula, the physician comes in and has a conversation with mom. So the nurse has had the conversation, lactation counselor has had a conversation, and now her provider is having the same conversation. But if she's still adamant about it, we go ahead and get the order from the physician and we provide mom with the formula. If they go with formula, then they're really missing out on the immunologic properties of breast milk. The American Pediatrics says that's the first immunization. They lack the lactoferrin, they lack the normal GI, and obtaining the normal gut flora. With supplementation, we're seeing those babies cross their growth curve, which is not a good thing. If a mother cannot breastfeed, maybe she could express her milk um, by hand or with a manual or electric pump, or maybe she could get milk from the milk bank. Her very last option would be formula. When a baby receives a supplement through a bottle, the baby might have a hard time going back to the breast. Really the benefit of locking up the formula was that we added a step in the process to where it's actually a little bit harder to give formula as opposed to the easy out whenever a patient is having a problem. So when we first started on this journey, we didn't even really keep track of a lot of stuff. We kept track of our exclusive breastfeeding rate, our breastfeeding initiation rate, and so we knew our supplementation rate, but we didn't know why we were supplementing. So data helps you tell the story, and then patient interaction helps you figure out the details that kind of fill in the gaps, and that's why it's so important to have a helper in the IT department. The electronic medical record helps everyone tell their story. We got rid of the formula bags and the formula discharge bags for our moms. Even though the bags are free, um, we just saw it as a conflict in our messaging. And one of the biggest complaints of moms everywhere is that they get inconsistent messaging. Every time that I see that formula has added something else new and greater and looking closer like breast milk, but doesn't even get close to what breast milk actually offers. It is what the mother has made specifically for that baby, and not just for that baby, that baby at that feeding. Formula companies have used lots of money in advertising, trying to convince people that it's just the same, it's just a choice. Studies have shown that it's not better than breast milk, formula is less than breast milk. 